Hi guys, Nicole Brule Walker, your movement mentor. So one of the things that comes up all the time in clinic and online is about hamstrings. So many people stretch hamstrings day after day after day and are not getting the results that they really wanted. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to know before you even think about stretching your hamstrings. There's two scenarios that you could be going through mainly. Um, now, if, it's some, if the hamstring was in a short and tight position, then yes, you probably do want to get some length into that. But unless you know that that's the situation, you shouldn't be stretching your hamstrings out. The other scenario is, and this is the more common of them, is that say if this band was where the hamstrings start, just underneath my bottom, just in the sitting bone, and they start there and run down the back of the leg to just behind the knee, and so if this was the length of the hamstring and it was stretching, 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 and this was where it was being held, I've got tension here. But do I have a hamstring that needs stretching? No, because it's already in a long position. So what we need to do is actually something to activate the hamstring to bring it back into a better position. Now, this is one of the principles we learned through Anatomy and Motion with Gary Ward, and the idea that a muscle has to lengthen before it contracts. So what feels like a little bit of a stretch that I'm going to put you through in this exercise actually is an exercise in trying to bring it back into a more neutral position so that it is more balanced. So, for example, if you were looking at it from a postural type, if I were in a situation where my pelvis is drifting forward a little bit and I've got a little bit more curve in my lower back than is normal, then the insertion of that hamstring is being lifted up, so it's longer. So in that instance, we don't necessarily want to stretch it, we want to try and activate it. So we do that through taking, just in this instance, the left leg forward, and if we think about 12 o'clock being in front and six o'clock behind me, three o'clock and nine, and we're in the center of that clock face, so just gonna help with direction here. So I'm gonna roll back onto my heel and I'm gonna push my hips back behind me to six o'clock, and as I do that, just as a straight roll back and push into the hips, you can already feel that I'm getting some tension there. Now we're gonna try and make that a little bit bigger. So when we go back, what I want you to do is reach down and pull the toes up and come up nice and tall. Now, as we reach back, tuck the pelvis under and go down and back up. And so we're taking it from that nice lengthened position, lengthening everything at the back of the body, and then coming up to snap it back into place, basically, and into a nice position. So when we're stretching like that, we're getting the plantar fascia, the calves, the hamstrings, the glutes, all the way up the spine, all the way up to the base of the skull, because all of those muscles are interconnected, and it's really good just to work on it all. So we need that tilt of the pelvis to round the spine, so when we go down into that reach, we've got a rounded spine rather than a flat back here, which is just hinging at my hip. So I'm going to round and reach and come up. And so I like to just pair this with a breath. So breathe in and breathe out. And there's lots of variations on this. And when I work specifically with somebody, I would take you through the best positioning and the best option that you have in this exercise. So when you round the spine, make sure you keep the head up and come back up. Breathe in and breathe out. And so you could do this on both sides. It isn't going to hurt. Generally, most of us need it on one side more than the other. You'd work on the idea of having eight to 10 of these, although we don't like to use numbers necessarily. We want quality rather than quantity. And you want to make sure that you're actually achieving what you need to achieve. So take your time setting it up in the first instance. So what I recommend is just go with the straight hip, going back, lifting the toes, getting used to, as you come forward with your hips, placing the foot down. Now, when you've done that, then you can start to add a bit more in. So we're gonna tuck the pelvis under on the next one, round the spine, reach with the arms, and then try and take that reach just that little bit bigger and keep the head and up. And so by adding those layers, you're giving your body the opportunity to see if it's okay where it is before you move on. And if you're not okay, then you stay back at the lower level, work at that for a little while, and then gradually progress. As I said, it's about quality, not quantity. And you want to be doing this two or three times a day. You can use it as well as a warm up if you're a runner, or if you're going to do some sort of activity or sport or walking. You can use this as a warm up before you go, and it will just help to restore that pelvis into more of a posterior tilt 
So it takes some of that excess curve out of the lower back. So you may find that it actually helps your lower back feel a lot better too. So I hope you uh, enjoy it. Hit like, hit, 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 hit subscribe, and uh, let me know what you want to hear about next.